Good morning. Viewers of this channel have been contacting me on Facebook and email privately and uh, sending me pics of their projects and asking me for advice as to how to set them up for molding and casting. So I take the photographs and I've been, you know, marking them up, putting in the sprue, where the sprue goes, where the vents go, where the parting lines go, all that stuff. Um, and that's been fun for me and I've enjoyed it, but it's not doing any good for you guys. So I decided that from now on, I'm only going to do these uh, project consultations here on the channel where everybody can benefit from them. So if you do have a project that you're working on and you'd like to send in some photos and have me kind of tell you how I would set it up for casting, then all the information for doing that will be down in the description below. This video today is a test of this concept. I just wanted to see if I could make clear how you would set up a casting job uh, just using photographs, not actually using the model. I picked up this rooster in the Philippines. I have no idea who the artist is. Uh, it's unmarked, unsigned. Uh, this was just in some little shop in Manila uh, full of wood carvings. And I really don't want a casting of it, but I thought it would be perfect to use as a test of this idea. So let's get started. If you're planning to make a mold and you're casting your sculptures, it's really helpful to design and make the sculpture with molding and casting in mind so that you don't make the kind of mistakes that make it almost impossible for you to cast and mold something. This rooster obviously was not designed to be molded and cast, and uh, there were a few things that I thought would be useful to modify. So if you look at, the, look at this rooster and you'll see how sharp his comb is, really sharp points, and all, likewise, he has sharp points down here on, his tail, on these tail feathers. Now these feathers are nicely rounded over, I didn't really love the shape of that, so I kind of rounded it over nicer. If you look at my photograph, I photoshopped it to make to smooth out so there aren't sharp creases and sharp points in the comb. It's more of a flowing line. And likewise, in the, tool, in the two tail feathers, it's nice and round. Nothing comes to a sharp point. And in roto molding, that's really helpful because where you're going to catch bubbles in a roto mold is right out at the tips. These are going to be the deepest recesses in the mold. The you know, projections become the deepest holes. And when there are sharp projections, there are little tiny holes at the bottom and the resin just flows, but it traps air every time. So when you're designing a sculpture, design the sculpture with the casting in mind and you will save yourself so many heartaches. I mean, really one of the keys to being a really good caster, uh, a really good mold maker and caster is knowing how to design a sculpture or knowing how to set up a sculpture so that it can be successfully molded and casted. I took this photograph of the rooster and the first thing I did was to split it into two pieces. Um, and that's because the base is going to be cast solid and the body is going to be cast hollow. It just isn't going to work to keep them together. It, they just, that's too big of a bottleneck between the legs. So you got to split the pieces apart and that means we have to engineer some kind of a connection between the body of the rooster and the legs. So to do that, I added some new pieces. I built a box uh, around the base, and that's just the box, the mold case for the rubber. But I also put in each of the legs, running coming out of each leg, going in there, I would put in a quarter inch, and you can see it in the photograph right here, I would put in a quarter inch dowel about an inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch long. And all that's gonna do is to create a space in the mold, and I'll show you why later. But we need that little uh, quarter inch dowel to create that space in that mold. And the other thing that I did was decide where I was gonna put the sprue to, to pour the hollow casting. And you want it in an inconspicuous place. You just, you don't, you know, want it, you know, some, somewhere dumb where you got to spend a lot of time cleaning up. So the most inconspicuous place on this casting is uh, pretty much uh, right here. <laughs> oh, well, but that's the best spot. So what I would do is drill a hole about a three quarter inch hole and put a uh, dowel in, in there, just as you see here in the photograph, put in this dowel and I would uh, and glue them in with wax. And also I would uh, wax them up, wax up the wood because it's a wooden dowel and you always want to make sure that anything in wood is well coated in wax. That way there's no chance that the rubber or anything else can stick to it. So now that kind of basic preparation is done. 
The next thing to do is to fill the box with rubber and to brush the rubber shell onto the body of the rooster. So I would just, you know, you've seen me do this before. In fact, you can watch me do this exact process in this video, uh, link up above. You can use the dowel that is the pore spout of the rooster uh, to hold it while you put, while you brush the blanket on. Uh, just uh, get yourself a scrap piece of plywood and drill a hole in it and uh, you can use that as a base. And that'll hold the whole thing while you are actually applying the rubber. Now all we have to do is pour rubber in the box with the base and legs and brush a rubber blanket on the body of the rooster. In this picture you can see how thick I built the blanket up. You don't want a blanket to be too thick because then you're wasting a lot of rubber, but you don't want it to be floppy either. It's got to be rigid enough, thick enough, to hold its shape when it's supported by the mother shell. Also, if you notice in the box, there's a lot of space uh, to fill up around the legs. And I think that's a perfect time to use uh, cut chunks of old molds. Uh, I do it all the time. I save old molds and when I need to recycle them, I cut them into chunks and I press them down into the rubber and that fills up a lot of space, gets rid of old molds and it saves on money. So once those things are done, the next step is to pull the mold the leg mold out of its box and to brush on a resin mother shell and the and the shell is going to be on each side so you got a blanket you got a blanket mold that completely encompasses the the bird but the shell is on each side like that wrapping around the bird you don't want to make a so, a single solid complete shell you want to make the shell in halves and again if you look at how I molded the pug mug you know that I built up a ridge of rubber around it and then just built the resin to the edge of that. Go watch that video because that's really going to tell you how I did that and it's the simplest way to do it. You actually want a visible line of rubber around between the two halves of the shell. That's the best way to do it. The blanket's made, the shell is made, and now we need to cut it open. And in this drawing here, you can see the orange line. That's where I would recommend you cut the thing. Uh, I'd cut between the legs and not out around the legs and just up the chest and to the face and a little bit uh, in the back between the tail feathers. I think that's the least conspicuous cut, cut line. Just cut up the middle like this to the face. Cut up one side of the face and into the beak. That's all you need. And same with this. Cut between the legs. I don't know if you can see that, but cut between the legs and cut about as far as you need to go, which is probably about to here. And that's really all you have to do. I think that cut strategy will release the piece just fine. In this drawing, you can see why I left that little pin in the end of the leg. Because before I pour this mold, I want to bend a piece of steel or aluminum wire, quarter inch wire, and, and put it into the mold. That's called potting in. We're going to pot in that wire. And there's going to be one in each leg. They don't have to be precise in any way when they're down inside the base, but that's going to give a tremendous amount of strength to these, you know, very narrow, skinny legs. So you have a lightweight body and you'll have strong legs that will support the body really well. The rubber band strategy I'm using is the same one I used on the pug mug. It's just rubber bands that wrap all the way around and also cleats that hold the mold together with even gentle pressure. The final step in rotocasting this rooster uh, would, be to, would be to make a cradle for it and mount it to your machine. I'm not going to show you that because I don't know what your machine looks like. I don't know what kind of cradle would work the best for you. Uh, or alternatively, you could simply slush cast it just by spinning it and rotating it by hand. And that works well too. We did the rotocast version, but what if it was smaller and we wanted to cast it solid? Let's do that now. This rooster is a perfect opportunity to show you a completely different way to set up a mold uh, or set up a model inside of a mold case. As you can see, I've got the rooster suspended from the top of the case. The base and legs are mounted to the bottom of the case uh, and the rooster is held in place by his pore funnel, uh, which is just suspended by a little stick, like a popsicle stick or a very lightweight stick. There's no lid on the top of the case. It's just a narrow stick that's holding him up. That way you can pour the rubber on either sides of them and down into the sides of the case. Uh, and so you have easy access for pouring. Uh, this piece is a little tricky to vent. Each one of the legs and the four feathers, these pieces right here, they all need to be vented and to have individual sprues coming off them. 
And so you're going to have sprues coming off here, you're going to have sprues coming off the legs, and you're going to have sprues coming off of here. Here's a close-up of the rooster's face, and here are the three vents that I would put in using my blue sprue wax. As you can see, I'm coming off of each of the wattles on both sides, but I'm coming to a common point on the chest. And the reason that I don't want three vents coming off into three different places on the chest is it's just that much more stuff to clean up and it's totally unnecessary. The vent that's coming off the, the tip of the beak is running over to one side of a vent and then the other vent on the opposite side is by itself, but they all wind up together at the same point. You can see here's the first cut plane and then the second cut plane right next to it, a parallel almost plane, except they come together in a V. And then the final cut plane is between the beak and the vent that, uh, that lets the air out of it. Um, it seems kind of complex, but actually in practice it's pretty simple to do. When you cast those vents, they become solid little tubes of, of resin and you gotta be able to release them out. And the way you release them out is you put cut planes in there and so they just pop right out. Nice and simple and easy. In this diagram, the orange line is the cut, is the cut strategy, but it's a little more complicated because remember, uh, there's, there's, they're not just single vents coming off this rooster, they're actually parallel vents. So let me diagram that for you if I can. So let's, just, uh, let's just draw the rooster. Let's do it. We're gonna draw, the, draw this from a top view. Okay, so there's a top view. So let's put him in his mold case. Remember now, you're looking straight down at him from the top, like this. Straight down from the top view, that, that down, that view. And so what you see is the, the legs are here, the wattles are here, and of course that's his beak, and the feather tips are Let's just say that they're right here and right here. So that means you're going to have a, a funnel. This is the funnel that lets the, that lets the resin in. So there's four vents that are venting out these feathers. Remember, we're venting these feathers right here. That's what we're doing. So we need four separate vents. So you're looking straight down at these tubes, and then you also have a tube here, a vent here, and then you've got one here, here, and here, and these don't come straight out of the mold. They actually go back to a common point like this. So they touch the model right there, and then like that. So how do you cut this? Well, you know that you're going to have the major cut, if you look, is between the legs out to about, is, bet is, is, between the, is between the legs and up the chest into this, this, this vent point there. And then you're going to come up one side out to the beak and up the other side just to the other waddle. Here, you're going to come like this. This is the whole secret to it. See, what I, want, what I want you to learn is when you cut a mold, it's not just one cut. You can make cuts. So how this will mold, you can see how this will open. Each side will just pull. And these cuts that are between the vents, they allow you to, to release these vents. Because these vents, remember, after you pour it, these vents are now solid tubes of resin. And so you got to release them out. So... You may have to cut a little further, but you don't have to cut all the way down the tail if you look at this diagram. That's how I would, I would cut. This is my cut pattern here. Uh, it seems complicated, but in practice, it's actually pretty simple. In order to cast the base and legs, you've got to flip the mold over, and as I've done here. And as you can see, it's, it's really it's an, open, it's an open pour. The base is just open on the bottom. Um, I would pour it from the toes and let the resin very, very gently run down. In fact, I would put a very small amount of resin down into the bottom so I knew that I would fill up uh, that little connecting rod. This mold also, don't forget, uh, just like the, the other mold, whenever you have a, a large boxy mold and you don't like wasting all that rubber, be, sh be sure to cut up old molds and, uh, and stick them in to the rubber and save yourself some money and um, some materials. 
In this diagram here, you see the cut plane, uh, you know, the area that you have to cut. So you see the top half of the mold is cut, but the bottom half of the mold is not cut at all. And I, as, I, as I said at the start of all this, this video is really an experiment. Uh, please let me know if the, you got something good out of this, if this was worthwhile. Uh, also let me know if you uh, want to send me a model that you're working on uh, to have me do the same thing I did here. I'd be happy to look at it and uh, you can just uh, get the email from down in the description to send it to me. I had a lot of fun making this video. I'm hopeful that it's going to be a kind of video that we're going to do in the, in the future because it lets me you know, respond directly to the questions that you guys have about how to set up your models. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.